What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly release reverse rants, no hate. So, special request. Yes, I saw some footage, some videos of Canelo Alvarez sparring. And it's very short clips, just like maybe 20 seconds, 20, 30 second clips. In fact, they're even combining two different sparring sessions because you can even see the person he's sparring has on different clothes in one clip. And basically, they're labeling the videos, Canelo gets destroyed in sparring. Now, let me break this down for you guys, tell you what you're seeing. First off, we don't know how long the sparring session was, but I'm sure it was longer than 20, 30 seconds. And... Anyone can take a clip of someone getting the best of you, right? And even for Canelo to get the best of that guy, I forget the guy's name, but um, even for Canelo to get the best of him, they're going to say what he's supposed to, right? But at the same time, they're putting these little clips up just showing the same things over and over. You see, like, when he's beating Canelo to the punch, when Canelo slips and then comes up with the uppercut and miss, and I'm noticing every channel that's doing that, that's, that, that put a title up about him getting beat, they all show the same clip and they're all showing and saying the same things and focusing on the same things. Now, somebody went in so far to say that Canelo's a trash fighter, he's garbage, he's overrated. Okay. Now, me personally, I don't think Canelo's a trash fighter at all. I think Canelo is a solid fighter. Now... I don't see him the way everybody else does. Always calling him God Canelo, Lord Canelo, King Canelo. Canelo can do no wrong. Canelo, you know, he's the greatest of all time. He's this, whatever. Okay, miss me with all that shit. I don't, you know, I feel like Canelo may have improved on certain things. You know, like when people say, oh, he's way better now than when he fought Floyd because they want people to feel like he could beat Floyd. You know, he's better than what Floyd was. He, he's past Floyd and all this. That's what they want people to feel, which is basically irrelevant for people to bring up because when he fought, he lost. You know, Floyd is much older than Canelo. He retired, and that's that. Leave it alone. So, at the end of the day, um, what you're seeing, okay, the reason that these guys are doing this is because they don't like Canelo. But it's more of a dig at the fact of Canelo fans than it is Canelo. Because even though they're saying he's trash, he's overrated, this is to shame the people, okay, that talk shit. Now, for you Canelo fans that love to jump on everybody's channel, claiming Canelo will destroy Floyd now, Canelo's this, he'll kill Charlo, he'll beat Benavidez, he's this, he's that, nobody can beat him. Okay, keep the same energy when he get his ass whooped. Because when he lost to Beagle, you guys are making excuses. Oh, but he dared to be great. Bebo was too big. But every last one of you before the fight was like, oh, man, this guy's too straight up and basic. He's not going to beat Canelo. Canelo's too get, um, skilled, gifted, blah, blah, blah. You see he did the cold left. Then all of a sudden, when he loses, he was too small. So this was basically um, an opportunity for these people to say, ah, nah, nah, look at what happened to Canelo. That's all they're doing. Okay, um... So I've seen it, and a sparring match does not mean that you basically can't fight. I mean, we've seen Oliver McCall drop Mike Tyson in the sparring match. You know, we've heard that this time Aaron Pryor used to get the best of Sugar Ray in sparring. You know, um, we've heard several fighters getting, like, beat or knocked out by their sparring partners. Hell, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, got knocked out. The, the week of the fight, the fight Marvin Hagler um, got knocked out by a sparring partner and pretty much he said it was the best thing to happen to him at that point because he was going to go in there and brawl with Marvin Hagler. And he said that being that his sparring part, partner knocked him out, it made him rethink, you know, um, his approach. And he decided, you know what, I'm going to go in there and box and move. And that's what he did. So those things happen. Not to mention your sparring partner they used to spawn you, so you guys know each other. You know, so they'll look good against you. They Like, they'll look good against you, and they might go in and get knocked out by a lesser fighter. 
but they're so used to sparring you that they know your style. So plus you got on 16 ounce gloves and, and headgear and all that shit. Um, some of the clips you can even see where they wouldn't even go on hard at all. Now, if a sparring session is for bragging rights, those guys are going to go hard and, you know, they, they want to best each other. So, I didn't see that. I just saw a guy sparring, you know, and it didn't really look like, it, it, it looked light to me. That that type of sparring, I consider light. Nobody was trying to really go at it. And um, as far as, you know, someone out pointing you or, you you know, back and forth, we only seen a short clip. We didn't see the whole sparring session. So when you hear Canelo getting destroyed, when you see that, that's for clickbait. That's to get more views and likes. That's to get people that don't like Canelo. They're going to see that. That's music to their ears. And they're going to, yeah, let me watch this video. That's all that is. You know, um, I didn't see anything about him getting destroyed. I mean, in that clip, how is he getting destroyed? He didn't get knocked down. Didn't get knocked out. Didn't get wobbled. He was, um, they just basically, whoever put the video out, it, it was either edited to show the guy getting the best of Canelo or they only put those clips out where he was getting the best of Canelo. Now, this is not to defend Canelo and it's not to, to shit on the fighters. It's just the logic and the reason of what we were seeing. This is what I'm explaining. This is what you guys saw. And in fact, we don't know. We didn't see the whole sparring session. So how can you say he got destroyed? You know, um, that's all that was. And, you know, stop taking things so personal and stop, you know, running around like getting angry. And, and then you want to jump on other people's channels and argue the point about Canelo's this, Canelo's. It's just a fucking fight, man. That's all. And this was nothing but a sparring um, session. So not a big deal. No, I didn't see any just nobody get destroyed. I just saw, yeah, the guy was catching Canelo. You know, everybody showed the same clip. And they all focused on the fact when... Canelo slip back and then come with the uppercut and he miss. And people, you know, oh, he's washed up, he's trash, he's garbage, he's this, he's that. They're going to say that. But you guys love to get go back and forth arguing and wasting your time about nothing. You know, people can have their opinions. The same way people don't like Canelo, a lot of y'all like Canelo, but y'all don't like other fighters. You, you know, y'all call Floyd Gayweather. You, you, you talk shit about the Charlos and everybody else and Benavidez and, and Caleb Plant. Y'all, you know, so I don't even know how the fuck you would care, personally. Like, for me to sit here and get mad over something somebody's saying about another grown-ass man, it's like, man, I don't care how you feel about these fighters. But this is what you're seeing. Um, it's not a big deal. No, I don't think Canelo's trash. Um... Yeah, he's overrated in a lot of people's minds. Like I said, like God, Canelo, Lord, Canelo, he's untouchable. Nobody can beat him. Well, he got touched by Bebo. He got touched by Floyd. He had other fights that people felt he lost. You know, whether with Triple B, with Laura, um, uh, and a couple other people. Regardless, you're always going to have people that don't like certain fighters. But, you know, what, what, what can you say when you guys do the same shit towards other fighters? You know, Canelo ain't special. Like, oh, you can't say nothing about Canelo. You can say whatever you want about any of these motherfuckers. They're all the same to me. They're human beings. I don't know anybody that that's that's an alien. You understand? I don't know anybody that that's anything other than human. So it is what it is. There's nothing to even fucking get an attitude about. But that's what you guys are seeing. People just over-exaggerating about a sparring session. That's all. Now, if people feel like Canelo's trash, they don't like them, why would you care? That's what it is, <laughs> you know. Now, on to something else. I was thinking, I almost basically I touched on it briefly in a video. Um, it wasn't about Undisputed so much, but um, I didn't touch on it too much because at that point, this was uh, right around the time when Spence was going to fight Ugas. But let me say this. It's looking more and more like the Spence and Crawford fight may not happen. So what I was thinking was this, if that fight is not going to happen, immediately after they know that, okay, it's off, Spence and Crawford both should be trying to get a fight with Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman should have no reason to reject it. Now, it's a legacy fight for all three of them because they never fought each other on top of that. So 
That's the beauty of it. It's not a rematch. It's a fight we never got yet. Keith Thurman is constantly saying you haven't seen the that best Keith Thurman yet. So I'm saying, well, when is that going to be on your very last fight? Because you've been saying this for years. Every year he said the same thing. You, you, you haven't seen the best Keith Thurman yet. So at the end of the day, one of them. If both of them should be trying, but one get the fight, whoever doesn't get Keith Thurman, you need to fight Ortiz, Conor Ben, or Jerron Ennis. There's no reason for you not to, unless you're scared that, damn, this is risky, high risk, low reward. What if I lose? Then that blow my chance, you know, with, you know, this, I'm saying the mindset of whatever fight, if that was to happen, that, that just say if Spence got Keith Thurman. Right? Okay. Well, who's Terrence Crawford going to fight? Or vice versa? Whoever didn't get the Keith Thurman fight need to fight a, a credible, worthy opponent, not some meatball. And you guys are saying Gerard Ennis is not ready. He, he's not on that level. Okay. Then, then fight him. If not him, Ortiz. If not him, Conor Ben. And I feel like Gerard Ennis is the best out of those you know, up him and Ben and Ortiz. I feel like he's the he's, he's the best welterweight out there, along with you know Crawford, Thurman, and um and Spence. And I feel like he's ready for any one of them. Now, at the end of the day, Keith Thurman, former one world champion, Jerron Ennis is yet to get there. He's trying to get there. So again, if he's such an easy opponent, he's not. Then go beat him. And I guarantee you, for the people saying he's not ready. If Spence or Crawford was to beat him, they'd add his name to the resume as if he was worthy. So all of this, you know, oh, he's not that man. Go in there and fight. So, and also, what we don't want to see is this. Let's just say, for example, if 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 Spence was to get the Keith Thurman fight, because he has more to offer, definitely with three belts. You understand? And then pretty much if Keith Thurman would, would, would be able to win, which I don't think he beat Spence, but regardless, if he would be able to win, well, now you just one fight away from Undisputed. If Crawford, was to say if Crawford was to fight Gerard Anderson win. But what we don't want to see, if that was to happen, is I don't want to see Crawford call out Ugas. So then we can see, compare what he did to Ugas versus Spence. First of all, he won't put the physical hurt on Ugas the way Spence did. You know, and they're two different types of fighters, man. And he doesn't have that kind of power that, that Spence has. It's a different type of fight. Outclass, outbox, I I feel like he'll do that to Ugas. Um, and I'm not saying he can't hurt him. But overall, I think, and I think Terrence Crawford will definitely beat Ugas. But we don't want to see that shit. We don't, we don't want to see that. Um, not to mention... You know, the type of beating that, that Spence put on him, you know, um, he may not, Ugas may not even be the same after that after that fight. So, like Crawford was saying, you know, you know, I don't care about the money like that. If it's 50-50 now, I'm confident in my skill, right? So, you're confident in your skills, right? Fight one of those guys, a worthy guy. You win, Spence get past um, uh, um, um, Thurman. I don't know where it leads to after that because you guys, the negotiations right now seem like they're not doing, nothing's going on. So at some point, something has to happen. But yeah, they need to try to make sure they have a plan B and a plan C. Because if Undisputed is not going to happen, then what? Because truthfully, what Errol Spence said, he was saying he wanted one more fight at 147 and then he was going up to 154. That's what he said. Now, if he's going to hold to that, we'll see. But I don't think that 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 either one of those guys should leave 147 without saying I cleaned up my division. I beat everybody from my era. You understand? I really don't. I, I, I you know it's up to them what they do. But I don't see how Eric could go up without not fighting Keith. And Spence, I mean, um, and um, Crawford, and vice versa. All right, vice, ver vice versa, because even though Crawford spent most of his time at 140, while he was, you know, making history there, they were in there scrapping at 147. So the same thing, okay? You beat Porter. Now, if you can beat 
Keith Thurman, and 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 and, and, and you know, and you can be Errol Spence. It's one thing for somebody to you know go up to a different weight class, and that's what we're saying. We, why they're all still there? They need to make sure that they fight, but that's up to them, you know. And nobody's getting younger, so they need to make sure that they have something lined up just in case this fight don't happen. Because, in all honesty, all we heard was a call out at the end of the fight. I'm coming for them belts. And then after that, just a few words traded back and forth. Twitter, stupid shit. Like, I don't care about none of that. And whatever details are happening that is preventing this fight, which we, we heard the words of Bob Aaron, it's just one of these things where if you guys are not going to do everything in your power to make sure that the fight happens, then you need to make sure that you fight worthy opponents. And don't stop with these excuses about Jerry and it's not being ready. Or T is not being ready. Ben not being ready. Then go beat them and prove it. Because that's how you win fights. Not with your mouth, but with your with, with, with your hands. So you go in there and you beat them, then okay. Because it's like one of these things. I don't understand what's going on, how fights. I mean, Ryan, Ryan Garcia don't want to fight Devin Haney. He don't want to be undisputed. I guarantee you, if Haney wasn't the one with all them belts, it, he have a different mindset. I don't think he really feel like he can beat Devin Haney. Plain and simple. Crawford seemed like he wants to fight. Spence seemed like he wants to fight. This is not about taking sides. It's just, well, what do you guys have lined up afterwards? What What are you going to do if you guys are not going to fight each other? And for the fans that want to see this fight, you guys should let them off the hook so easy where you're just sitting up here and going to support them just fighting the meatball just to put money in their pockets. We always talk about these sanctioning bodies putting all these belts out to fatten their pockets up. The fighters are doing the same shit when, you know, you're not going to put your best foot forward to make sure that you have this legacy fight. You, you don't want to leave this money on the table. No, they're trying to maximize their dollars, and I get that. But... If you don't have paying customers coming to your fight or ordering pay-per-view or whatever, then you're not making money, right? So if the fight doesn't happen, you guys should not allow them. And what I mean by allow them, if they decide to fight some meatball, I wouldn't tune in. Why? It's your choice of what you do, but you keep complaining about not getting the fights you want. And we've had some pretty good fights in the past six, seven months we have. But at the end of the day, you keep complaining. But then when these guys, you know, end up walking away, what you do is, oh, I'm Team Spence. Well, I'm Team Crawford. And you ride with whatever decision that they make and you support them even when they act on like cowards. And I'm just using them for example. But this is what I'm saying. So I don't know what's going on. I'm, I really don't want to talk too much and make videos about those two. Really, I mean, if something goes on as noteworthy as one thing, but I felt like this is something that people should have in their mind. They should be thinking. The, the, as the fighters, they should be like, nah, you know what? This like is not going to happen. If it doesn't happen, I want Keith Thurman. I want Gerard Ennis. You know, I, I want one of those guys. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want some meatball or I'm just going to sit out and wait. And, nah. and Keith Thurman should not have a reason to turn this fight down. Keith Thurman, um, you know, the guy's been too inactive. Lost to Pacquiao, disappeared all that time, comes back. And, you know, he has the one fight. He's been quiet. All he's been doing is training. He's been traveling, seeing videos and training and talking, training and talking, training and talking. It's time to start getting in the ring. You guys are not getting any younger. Before you know it, you know, you, you're going to slip. And all of a sudden, you're just not as good as you was. Everybody don't get washed up at the same time, you know. But these guys are, are too inactive. So... Just thought that was an interesting thing. And yeah, like I said, the Canelo thing was a special request. And you know, that's nothing to sweat, man. People gonna always say things. Um, but that's what it is. So that's all I got for y'all right now. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people, and I will catch y'all on the next video.